Reduce, reuse, and recycle. The three R's of waste management are the go-to mantra for the eco-conscious. But what if there's another way? Now, the UN estimates that nearly 50 million metric tons of electronic waste, such as smartphones, laptops, and printers, are produced every year. It predicts global e-waste will jump by 50% by 2030. Less than 20% is collected and recycled, while most of it ends up in landfill and incinerators. While others saw trash, waste research scientist Vina Sajwala saw opportunity. Her pioneering research into waste and turning it into new green materials has earned her the title of the 2022 New South Wales Australian of the Year and a string of accolades. I started by asking Professor Sajwala what inspired her to dive deep into transforming waste into something useful. When we think about uh, materials that we need in our everyday lives, whether they are materials to make our electronic devices, like our metals, or the, whether they are ceramics and plastics, all of these different kinds of materials are there in so many obsolete devices and obsolete products that we in many times don't think about and we throw them away. But just because a device stops working doesn't mean that those materials are no longer useful. So for me at the Smart Center at UNSW, we're working on world leading solutions as to how do we harvest these important materials from our waste resources and really going beyond traditional recycling. And what we talk about is fourth R of reforming. And when we start to reform these materials, we can actually bring them back to life in the form of new products, taking metals, for example, and taking our waste textiles and waste glass and producing all kinds of innovative and rather exciting products. And one of your greatest achievements is the groundbreaking invention of so-called green steel, the environmentally friendly technology for recycling and of life rubber tires to replace coal and coke and steel making. And tell us what positive impact the solution has had on the environment so far. When we actually started polymer injection technology, it was very much about, you know, looking at how we can replace some of the coal and coke that is injected into electric arc furnaces uh, with, in fact, with rubber and polymer material. When we introduce these rubber inject materials into our electric arc furnaces, you know, we can indeed show that it is possible to liberate right inside those steel making furnaces hydrogen molecules and by doing so, we're actually using hydrogen from waste tires and we're therefore reducing our dependency on coal and coke because it's that hydrogen that actually brings about that reduction uh, inside steel making furnaces and producing more and more of that metal. So the ability to actually decarbonize, which is what the world is really looking for, solutions in the process of making metals in this case. So ultimately the ability to connect waste resources and not see it just as a waste, but see it as really valuable green resources and use that in green manufacturing allows us the opportunity to not only continue to produce high quality materials, which we know we need, but also decarbonize, recycle and reform our waste materials. So it's an overall win-win outcome for our environment and for our economy. So your eye is always on the future, Professor, and your in innovative thinking has led to the idea of green ceramics, you know, mixing textile waste with glass to produce architectural and home decor products. Why textiles and how did you come up with this idea? A lot of those materials in our textiles are actually still very useful. So we can imagine, you know, when the world is getting inundated with waste textiles that we don't have to necessarily put them away into landfills or incinerate them. But imagine if we could bring these textiles to life in the form of a beautiful green ceramic. And here's an example mm -hmm. of, of a beautiful green ceramic um, that's got, um, you know, a blue, blue a fabric in it. We've got the opportunity to take advantage at the micro level. And that's what we talk about when we talk about micro recycling. What we are doing is taking end of life garments and a waste glass. We can imagine creating completely different products as we have done in this case. So really, um, the possibilities are endless. Let's talk about the possibilities. What's in store for the next generation of recycling and upcycling technologies that you're most excited about? 
we do know that there are so many different kinds of batteries that we all use in our everyday lives, whether they are the ones that are rechargeable or the ones that can't be recharged. In all of those cases, they have some very important materials that they contain. For us, it's about recognizing that those important metals that are present, take, for example, something like cobalt that is there in, in our batteries. We can actually harvest those in a micro factory setting. And to be able to do that in a clean and green way in a micro factory setting allows us to really start to produce all kinds of metals. And we can then imagine that it's not just about metals. We've got also things that we need like zinc oxide, manganese oxide, so many different kinds of materials that can be harvested from our batteries. So you're not wasting energy in unnecessarily doing large scale production, but really very targeted micro factories. They then allow you to harvest these important materials from your different waste streams and therefore allowing you to reform them into, of course, the next product, whatever that might look like. We do need to start to think about those supply chains of those important materials and secure those materials. And of course, indeed, the best way to see some of these materials is to be able to continuously put these products back into those materials loops so that over and over again, as the design changes, those materials can be harvested over and over again, as a device becomes obsolete, you bring that back to life. And I think to me, these kinds of multiple material loops allow a future where we are creating a sustainable future for the entire planet.